Okay, good evening everyone. Um, so, um, in this lecture we will start focusing on medium fidelity prototypes. Um, but before delving into this topic, um, as you probably know, we have already published uh, two things on the course website. Uh, the text for the assignment 4 uh, that will start tomorrow. Uh, and also the instructions and the template for the final report. So let's discuss very briefly these two, two things. Uh, let's start with the assignment four. So by uh, today, by this evening, you should um, put your individual reports on GitHub and you should share your reports uh, to the other groups. Um, so from tomorrow you can start the assignment four and the first step in the assignment is to decide which of the two prototypes in your group should be taken into account to move forward okay to be the core of your final implementation okay so you should focus on uh, the violations that you will receive you should try in your group to create a sort of joint report listing all the violations, merging duplicates, and so on. And starting from these reports, you should decide which prototype is, is better, in your opinion. Um, and of course, you will have to justify your choice. So it's, uh, you should reason about the violations that you will receive. Uh, you can also decide to move some functionality, some screens from one prototype to another. But again, y you have to justify your, your choice. Um, and so this is the first step. Um, then the second step, after having decided the prototype, uh, you should create uh, two screens um, in medium fidelity. Okay? So you decide which screens to, to focus on. Uh, maybe they are the most important screens, Maybe they are the screens that received more violations, okay? So you pick two screens uh, and you try to develop a medium fidelity prototype for those screens with, with the techniques and the tools that we will see in this, in this lecture, okay? Um, you, can, you should use probably Figma. Uh, which is the tool that we will explore today, but you are also free to use other tools if you want, like Balsamic or Marvel, uh, as you prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, and today we will see what is a, a medium fidelity prototype, and we will see some example, and you will perform an exercise on, on Figma to explore this, this platform. Mm -hmm. um, of course, in Producing this medium fidelity prototype of these two screens, you will try to solve the violations that you received. Um, so you will try to change something in the layout and in the functionality of your screens, trying to solve the problems that you, that you have received. Um, the point three is also to plan for the high fidelity prototype. So, uh, in addition to fixing the violations on the two selected screens, uh, you should also make a plan on how to solve the other violations that are maybe related to other screens of your, of your prototype, okay? Um, you can also disagree with the evaluators. Uh, maybe you receive some violations that, in your opinion, are not violations at all. Uh, so you can disagree, uh, but you must justify why you are disagreeing with the evaluator and why you discarded some, some violations. Mm? Um, so you decide this plan, you try to uh, write this plan for the next assignment that, that will be the last one the, uh, for the high fidelity implementation. Mm? Um, of course this plan must be then reflected in, in the final prototype. Uh, the deadline is, is December 12. There is no check for this assignment. Uh, so uh, you upload your uh, PDF on GitHub and then you will be able to start with the last assignment, with, with the high fidelity prototype uh, assignment. Mm -hmm. 
and of course all this information will be part in some way uh, of the final report hmm? any questions on this on this assignment yes No, you should not uh, modify your paper-based prototype. They can remain the same. Uh, you just have to, of course, uh, develop a new version of the two screens with the medium fidelity prototypes, and then all the changes must be reflected in the final implementation, so in the final high fidelity prototype. But you don't have to change anything in your paper-based prototypes. Yes? Uh, let me check it. Two lines before three. Two lines before three. Here. Yeah. Uh, it would be better probably if you can select two pages that are linked in some ways. Because we will see that developing a medium fidelity prototype means also developing something that is uh, interactive so if I click on a button I go from screen one to screen two so if you can select two screens that are in some ways related uh, linked together it's probably better because you can uh, implement this sort of interaction any other questions okay if there are no questions we can also briefly see the template and the instructions for the final report which is due uh, seven days before each exam date uh, there will be also the assignment five uh, with the same deadline and the assignment five will be mainly on uh, the usability test on your final implementation but anyway for the exam uh, you should uh, deliver uh, two artifacts uh, the code of your high fidelity prototype uh, in a dedicated repository that we will create for you with the name of your project not the name of your group but the name of your application of your solution and the final report that is a textual document that follows a predefined template that is reported here um, and also of course uh, you should also by this evening uh, deliver the um, individual report for the heuristic evaluation um, and we will consider these three things for evaluating your uh, your exam um, and this is the template uh, it's quite long uh, but you can already start to complete it if you want if you have time uh, at least uh, until the low fidelity prototype section uh, for sure uh, basically it's a merge of all the requests that we have made in the past assignments so you should already have this kind of information it's you should just reorganize them within this template suggest you to follow uh, all the bullet points here and insert all the information that are listed here um, to successfully deliver your your final report okay any questions on the final report? You can start looking at it and then of course there will be questions but you can use Telegram and lectures to, to ask for any questions you may have. Yes? So the good part will be in a separate repository? Yeah, it will be in a separate repository that we have to create for you um, but we will create it shortly. Uh, I think uh, for the beginning of the assignment five for sure. Any other questions? Okay. So let's focus on medium fidelity prototypes. Um, this lesson will be mostly an exercise so I will give you some very brief information about medium fidelity prototypes and then I will challenge you in, uh, in doing an exercise 
uh, exploiting Figma. Okay, so we will use a learn by doing approach. Uh, I will not stay here for an hour making a very boring temp, uh, tutorial on the platform. Uh, I will challenge you in exploring the functionality of this platform by doing an exercise. Um, so you have already seen uh, low fidelity prototypes and in particular paper-based prototypes. Uh, let's focus on uh, medium fidelity prototypes that are uh, prototypes that can be uh, designed, implemented via a computer tool, okay? So they are no longer on a sheet of paper. We are now using a programming platform uh, to develop this kind of, of prototypes. Um, in this case, uh, we have a medium fidelity and sometimes a high fidelity in look and feel. So in the, let's say, graphical user interface. But on the contrary, uh, especially with respect to paper-based prototype, we have a low fidelity in functionality and in behavior. Okay, so we have limited functionality. Because with paper-based prototype, uh, you can simulate the behavior of your application. And in theory, you can replicate also intelligent behavior from your, your application by simulating, by moving the pieces of, of, your, of your prototype. Here, instead, we have a sort of interactive software simulation in which the behavior is fixed, okay, is are coded, okay? So we can render the user interface, we can maybe accept some sort of input, but just uh, a limited input, uh, and we can respond uh, as an interaction by switching pages, uh, but with a limited uh, functionality. We always go from screen one to screen two, for example, okay? Um, so every time I click on a button, I will go on that page, no matter what I did before. Mm? Uh, I cannot move, for example, information from one page to another. I cannot enter text. I cannot select specific items, uh, so the interaction is, is limited. So it's low fidelity in, in functionality. Um, but we have a medium fidelity in the look and feel, so in the user uh, interface. Uh, and this kind of prototypes are also known as mockups or wireframes. Um, Typically, you don't design in medium fidelity all your prototype, all your system. You focus on a single screen or a set of connected screens to satisfy a specific goal. Um, and okay, they are medium fidelity in look and feel, but the drawing is still imprecise. Um, it's mostly in grayscale, so also in this course we will focus on medium fidelity prototypes that are in grayscales, so still no colors. Um, we want to convey the impression that the design is still preliminary. But we have some information that are already mm, high fidelity, like the right size of the interface that may suggest the device type, or the right size of the buttons, or the alignment of the buttons. Okay, so we have some elements related to visual design that are let's say, high fidelity in look and feel. Um, again, usually, this kind of prototypes display static information. So we just have predefined pages only. Um, and this is an example of um, how medium fidelity prototypes can suggest also devices. So as you can see, uh, we have the right size of the screens we know that this is a prototype for the web. There is the search bar on the top. Uh, we know that this is a mobile interface. Uh, so we have the right screen um, for our, our prototypes. And, and this is, let's say, a complete example of at least a screen designed in medium fidelity. It's done in mockups. It's another platform for medium fidelity prototyping. Um, it's a website. We can easily know that it's a website from this search bar here. It's an online store. Um, as you can see, we still don't have text. We have some text, but we also have some placeholders. 
So for example, the title here is probably correct, but here the description is just a placeholder. Um, we don't have images, uh, because again, it's mostly on grayscale, we don't want colors, so we don't have images. We just have this kind of placeholders for images. Um, but we can click, for example, at least in some parts of the interface. Uh, so for example, probably, uh, now it's, it's static here on my slides, but probably I can click here on the heart, here. And probably the interface will change, adding another icon here. Or maybe we can switch between tabs. So if I click here in home, I can probably go in the home page of this online store. Okay, so I can perform some clicks uh, that are basically linking different pages statically. Mm? So for a subset of, of things. Um, but of course I cannot click everywhere. So it's normal that some, some labels, some buttons are not implemented. Okay? So again, some areas of the design may be active, linking to another page. Some other areas may be inactive. Okay? So if you click on a button, nothing happens. Um, of course, you can design these uh, mockups from scratch, but you can also exploit design libraries, depending on the tools that you are using. Um, and through these design libraries and uh, stencils, UI elements, you can reuse components. Okay? So if you need a keyboard, you can probably find a keyboard in some libraries to be reused directly in your, in your mockups without having to uh, draw your keyboard uh, by, uh, from scratch. Okay? Um, or if you need some placeholders, some icons, you can try to find some, some elements in some libraries. And this is a set of tools that you can use. Um, uh, in this course, we suggest to use Figma. How many of you already know Figma? Okay, some of you, a little bit. Um, so we will suggest this tool, which is an online tool for rapid prototyping, uh, uh, through which you can actually uh, prototype both in medium and high fidelity, um, without code, of course. Um, but we will use it for uh, medium fidelity. Mm -hmm. But then you have also probably seen in your career, uh, in some courses, maybe Balsamic, uh, which is another tool. There is also mockups and so on. So if you are really experienced with another tool, you can also decide to, to use another tool. And this is another example of medium fidelity prototypes um, in which you can see that uh, it's all static. Okay, so to design your flow in your application, you have to uh, design multiple pages and then manually connect these pages uh, by hand. Okay, so linking, for example, uh, the click of this button with this screen, for example. Okay, so it's a manual connection. And you can also um, develop your prototypes with PowerPoint. Uh, placing your interfaces uh, in different slides. And moving between slides means moving between one page to another in your, in your screen. But again, we suggest you to use, to use Figma. Um, there are drawbacks, of course, in medium fidelity prototypes. Uh, you can click, but you cannot really interact with, with the system. So typically, there is no text entry. There is no data entry and there is also no real selection of data. Uh, so let's imagine you have a drop down menu. You cannot select any specific item of that drop down menu. Uh, if you select the third one, uh, maybe the selection is the first because just the first is selected. Okay? Um, some widgets are not active by default, uh, paths are static, and so the tester. Uh, can be engaged in this sort of game hunt for the hotspot, so uh, finding the few widgets elements that are active in your interface. So this means that this kind of uh, prototypes cannot be used for testing
for example, the effectiveness of your, of your interface, um, the behavior of your interface, uh, but it's useful for testing and understanding the UI and the general workflow of, of a given task. Okay? Any comment on this? So before moving to the exercise, uh, let's very, very briefly see uh, something about Figma just to allow you to start the exercise. So Figma is, can be reached at this address, figma.com. Uh, but I would like to start from this page, figma.com slash education, uh, to say that Figma is free for students and educators. So if you go here, you can get verified and get a full account on Figma. And I think it's, it's useful for this course so that you can exploit all the features, all the uh, tools that the platform provides you. Mm? Um, now let's go to the Figma homepage. Okay, there is a lot of things here. Uh, here you can see all your past projects, the projects that you imported. Uh, there are probably also some projects from last year edition of this course. Um, but let's see how we can uh, create a new, a new prototype here. Uh, so let's increase a little bit the size. So I create a new design file. Uh, I can create a draft and then I can move it into my files. Um, and this is the home page of, of Figma when you want to um, create something. Um, we can, of course, oops, give a title on our project. And we can also share our project using emails uh, to start a collaborative project and I think this is useful because you can create a single project within your group and then modify it collaboratively, uh, leaving comments and modifying it uh, together. Um, then you have three different parts in this interface. Uh, on the left you have the layers part uh, which is related uh, to layers that are uh, components in which you can insert other components. So they are parent components, the layers of your, of your uh, prototype. Then you have the working area, so the area in which you can actually prototype, draw something, uh, insert buttons, insert text, screens, and so on. And then we have on the right, the design and prototype tab. Uh, so through the design tab, you can modify the visual appearance of your uh, layers and components, changing the color, the text, the sides, and so on. And with the prototype tab, you can create interactions, linking, for example, the click of a button on a screen to another screen, okay? So very briefly, if I go here, the first thing to do is probably to create the main layer of your application, um, which is typically a frame. Mm? So if you go here in, the, in this menu, you can select frame. And as you can see, Figma suggests you to use some predefined frame, um, which already have some predefined dimensions. Okay? So if you are developing, for example, a mobile application, you can select a frame uh, that, uh, that has the dimension of the iPhone 14, for example. Okay? and Figma creates a frame for you with, with the right dimensions, okay? Within this frame, you can put all your elements of your interface. Mm? Of course, you can also have frames for uh, the web, the tablet, desktop, the watch, and so on. So you have now a frame here. I can, of course, rename it if I, if I want to. Um, let's create two frames and let's try to link them together. Okay, so I create another frame uh, with the same dimensions, okay? And then I would like to add a button here that redirects me to the other screen. Mm -hmm. So let's create a button here in, in the, let's call it the home page. Um, I can create a button, for example, by creating the shape of the button, and then I can add some text uh, within the shape. So 
let's create a rectangle here okay as you can see the rectangle is within the, the correct frame and let's put some text within the rectangle so I select here text uh, yes and I write no sorry and I write he here go to page 2 I can select the text I can uh, exploit in the design tab I can for example increase the font here let's put 40 maybe 30 okay now as you can see the text is not within the button so I can easily uh, drag and drop my text within maybe the rectangle oops I can probably group together these two let's try to group them right click group selection okay and I can place this on top of the of the shape so this can become by, by button then you can work on it trying to align the text uh, in the middle of the shape uh, but this is something that you can explore on your own and of course I can rename this as button one okay now uh, let's put some text on this secondary screen just to show this this interaction so let's click on text let's click here and this is the page 2 okay I can also center the text and uh, each element um, depending on the parent component like for example I can center it uh, I can put it on top uh, and so on and I can put it in the middle of the page so now I would like to create a link from this button to this page so I go on the button I select the button and I go on the prototype tab and I add an interaction okay here I can add clicking on the plus icon an interaction and I can select the kind of interaction that I want to add so for example I can add an interaction when the user tap the button when the user drag something uh, when while pressing the button and so on here I think we can uh, stay with on tap so when I tap the button I would like to in this case navigate to another screen this one okay as you can see now there is an arrow connecting my button to the second screen and if I want to try my prototype I can click here on run maybe by selecting the home page I click on run and click my run my prototype I have my very bad screen a terrible screen with one button but if I click on the button I go to the screen too okay so I can simulate my prototype and the interaction between the different the different screens mm? um, yes I can also show you this uh, this thing on Figma before uh, looking at the exercise um, how can I implement uh, a scrollable interface so an interface that can be scrolled this is particularly important for I would say both websites and and mobile applications um, so to design a scrollable uh, interface I need to have several elements that can be scrolled uh, some some elements will be within the frame some elements will be outside uh, and let's see what happens so I create uh, 
let's create some some basic shapes some placeholders here okay within the home page some rectangles and let's duplicate these these rectangles so some of them are within the interface some others are outside right okay uh, as you can see, they, they are outside also here on the left. Okay, there are some rectangles that are within the interface, the first two, and the other two are outside the, the rectangle. The first thing to do is to group these elements together to create the scrollable area. So I select here all the rectangles on the left. Okay, right click, group selection. I create a group for, for these elements group one i can also rename this uh, but let's continue to be brief now i can move this group within uh, the page that i'm trying to develop to prototype so within the home page so i drag and drop this group below the button okay so now i have this group which contains some elements that are displayed within the interface, some elements that are outside, but the group is within the home page. Now, I have to create uh, the frame related to the scrollable area. So I perform another right click on the group and I click on frame selection, okay? In this way, we have created a frame that contains the group. Now, I also have to define the area of the scrollable, uh, of the, the dimension of the scrollable area, okay? So, of course, I want to scroll elements and elements will be visible until here, the end of the page. So, I can resize the frame to match the end of the interface. Hmm? Perfect. So, we have a group which exceed the dimension of the page which is within a frame uh, which is instead consistent with the dimension of the interface now i can add the overflow interaction so i click on the frame um, i go on the prototype tab and here there is this overflow property i can set vertical vertical scrolling okay so um, if I select vertical here in overflow, this means that the frame will be scrollable vertically. So let's, let's try if it, if it works. I run the interface. I have my rectangles and they are scrollable, okay? There is still a strange behavior, uh, which is uh, rectangles are floating towards the top of the interface. We would like this uh, area to be fixed within the interface, right? So to fix this, we can go here again on frame. This time on the design tab, I can click here on the click content. Okay, if I select this option, the area will be will stay fixed in the interface. Let's try. Don't know if okay. And in this case, as you can see, I have this scrollable area that is fixed within my, my interface, okay? So these were the steps to create an area which is scrollable that I think that is very common if you are trying to develop, to prototype some mobile apps or, or web applications. Hmm? Again, the objective of today is to learn by exploring, so I'm not boring you with other uh, tutorials. Uh, I propose to you an exercise, which is present on the slides, which is actually a quite common exercise in the design community, um, which is re-engineering an high fidelity product, okay? Uh, so to learn Finba by doing, I suggest you to take a finished product um, and try to uh, 
develop to prototype the corresponding medium fidelity prototype okay uh, for a given task for a given user flow so the platform the selected platform is global and the task is this one ordering something from the promotions available on global express which is a micro fulfillment center also known as global supermarket i don't know if you are familiar with global but i also included some some screenshots uh, and the goal is to create a medium fidelity prototype for the global task uh, reported here using Figma. Um, you should try to simplify and strip down the task to its core component, in particular deciding what are the key elements that should be uh, represented and which placeholders instead uh, you can use. Mm? Um, and you should create a wireframe by connecting the different screens through Figma interaction. And this is the representation of the, of the task. Um, the time is limited, so I suggest you maybe to start with two consecutive screens, uh, and then if you have time, you can try to develop the whole user task. So this is the home page of Globo. Uh, is OK. This is the home page. Um, if I click here on Globo Express, I go here. Then I click on promotions, I go on the promotions of Global Expert. I can add some uh, items in my basket, for example, here the first one. Uh, and uh, yeah, probably I wrongly inserted the, this uh, screenshot. Um, basically, you can pick this item and maybe another item from, from the promotions. So there is this label that is displayed with the quantity of, of the items that you selected um, and then you can click on order and there is this last page to confirm your order and, and pay okay so I suggest you to pick at least two of these screens two consecutive screens if you can and try to uh, produce the corresponding medium fidelity prototypes uh, by using Figma okay and of course, if you have any questions, I'm here to support you. And towards the end of the lesson, we will see uh, an example uh, of a solution of, of, this, of this exercise. OK? So you have basically 40 minutes, more or less. So just to wrap up the lesson, you were uh, overly focused on the heuristic evaluation. So I don't know actually how many of you really try to follow the exercise. But anyway, uh, you will have to use Figma in assignment four. So you will have for sure to explore how to use the platform. Um, I can show you an example that I found, actually I found it online, but it's quite well implemented. There is some differences from um, the user flow, which is reported in the, in the slides, but anyway, this is the home page. Um, as you can see, let's zoom a little bit. No. Yeah, it's not working with zoom, but anyway. As you can see, there are some labels that are correctly named, uh, these ones, because they are part of the user flow. So it's important to write the correct labels in this case, because we are representing a given flow. And then there is some text that is instead a placeholder, like this one on top. Okay? So you can, you can choose which text is important to include. Uh, depending on the screens that you are prototyping. Uh, there are no images at all, uh, just placeholders here and also here for the, for the main items, for the main navigation items. Uh, maybe here they used um, a square, maybe you could use a, 
uh, circle to replicate better the on page of Glovo, but anyway, uh, it's a medium fidelity prototype, so also in this way it, it's fine. There is interaction, and the interaction is working just for the user flow. So I can just click on Globo Express, that's fine. If I click here, I go on the second page. Mm? Um, here I don't have promotions, I have order again, but it's the same. Um, again here, there are some placeholders for images, for text, some labels that are correctly named because they are important, they must be clicked so you have the correct label. In this case I can click on order again and here I have the list of products. I don't have again pictures, I don't have descriptions. In this case the important thing in this uh, user flow, in this screen, is to be able to add something to my basket. Hmm? So if I click here, I can just click here in this case, I can add the first element and I go on the second page in which the first element is selected, okay? Uh, in this second page I can still add another element. As you can see, I'm forcing the user to pick the elements that I want, okay? It's fixed, uh, so I can just select this element here. So I have another screen with another icon. I have to replicate the screen just by adding a label on top. Uh, and finally, I can click on order. As you can see, in this case, the label and the price is correct. It's part of the user flow, so it's important to use the correct names and, and numbers. And here is the final, in, is the final screen. So you have all the details of my order. Some details are placeholders. Um, some labels are correct. Um, of course, the buttons are correct, at least the buttons that I, I should click. There is a map that is actually a sort of placeholder uh, and another placeholder here, okay? So this was an example of a medium fidelity prototype of a given user flow on a real application uh, that should allow you to understand uh, which are the important components to be included, which placeholders you can use to mimic the interaction in a, in a given task. Mm? And you should replicate this for two screens of your uh, prototype in, in the assignment form. Mm? Any questions, any doubts about Figma? We will start using it tomorrow, so we can also uh, see together if there are problems with the platform tomorrow in, in the lab. If there are no further questions, I think we can stop here. And have a good evening and see you tomorrow then.